exciting to be celebrating Palm Sunday. Uh, today marks the beginning of the holiest week in the Christian calendar. Now, most Christians view Christmas as an equally holy day, uh, and maybe even uh, maybe even sometimes more holy. And actually, our society certainly places the focus on Christmas. I mean, God knows, by the time August is coming to an end, we're going to start seeing Christmas displays up in the stores, right? I don't really see Easter until about, you know, the end of winter. Like, around, you know, around this time, you start to see the Easter stuff come out in the stores. Certainly not coming out in December. Um, the focus is certainly on Christmas, but... but Traditionally, Christmas has always taken a second fiddle to Easter. People didn't start celebrating Christ's birth, actually, until the 4th century BCE. Or not BCE, CE. Until the 4th century. So you're looking at the 300s uh, CE. That's when people started to uh, actually record celebrating uh, Christmas. But Christians have always, always celebrated Easter. In fact, every Sunday is a mini, a mini Easter service throughout the year. Every Sunday. Every time that the early Christians gathered and they worshipped and they had communion, they were, rep they were, they were uh, reenacting almost the death and the resurrection of Christ. Sunday became known as the Lord's Day because on Sunday the Lord rose. So Christians have always celebrated Easter, and with it, Holy Week, marking the, the week that Passover took place, the week that Christ entered into the city, was heralded as king, and at the tail end of the week, crucified as a criminal. Today is the day we proclaim Hosanna. Today is the day we celebrate the coming of the king. But why are we celebrating are we doing it for tradition's sake? Are we celebrating Palm Sunday because we're caught up in the warm fuzzies of the season? That I love Holy Week. And I get excited thinking about it. It's like, oh, Holy Week is approaching. Yes, we're going to have the palms. And we're going to do the, the, the Monday Thursday service. And we're going to do the Good Friday service. And, and uh, who knows what we do on Saturday. But Sunday is going to be Easter and it's going to be exciting. Is that why we're celebrating it? Do we actually believe Jesus to be the king? Or will we forget who Jesus was once we leave these doors? Now, in one sense, it makes sense that we start Holy Week off with Palm Sunday. I mean, chronologically speaking... It is on this day, 2,000 years ago, that Jesus did make his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And it is on this day that the crowds filled the street. It is on this day that the crowds were pulling palms off the trees and hailing him king and throwing the palms down on the ground and their coats on the ground for him to, to, to ride across. I mean, you can see the scene, right? The the shouting and the acclamation. You can see the scene. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem. People think that he is the Messiah. He's the king that Israel has been promised. He's the one that's going to overthrow the Romans. He's the one who's going to bring peace and prosperity to the land. So they hail him. Of the line of David, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. <coughs> blessed is this new king. <coughs> and of course, you can imagine the Romans perched up on the city walls, looking down as Jesus enters. Going, uh-oh. <laughs> What's this we have here? What we have to understand is that the Romans were already on edge as Jesus is entering into the city. The Romans already wondering how they're going to control this, 
this, this uh, group of people. Because Passover was one of the most sacred holidays in all of Israel. It's the holiday in which they remember their exodus from Egypt. It's the holiday in which they remember the, the angel of death passing over their house and sparing them so that they may go and worship God. Yes, this is one of the most sacred holidays in Jewish tradition. And so a whole bunch of people were going to be coming to the temple, buying their lambs, having it sacrificed to God, and then eating it for their Passover meal. This was going to be a crowd bringer. And the Romans knew that. And so anytime you have a crowd among the population that are uneasy about you being there, you have to watch it. Because there are people who are going to incite riots. And what do we have here entering into Jerusalem a week before, uh, or not even a week, but four days before Passover? We have this Jesus guy. And not only is he riding in, but he's riding in in a way that the scriptures say that the king would ride into the city. He's riding in, in in a way that shows this guy might incite a riot. There are crowds hailing him as king. Well, who's king? Herod. But not even Herod, really. Who's king? The emperor. This Jesus is a danger. He's a threat. Now, Jesus comes in in exactly the way Zechariah, chapter 9, verse 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Now the people know that Jesus has been doing great things, and he has been performing great miracles. And rumor has it, he might be the guy. He might be the guy to restore Israel back to where God promised they'd be restored. So Jesus riding in on a donkey is no short political statement that he's making. And the people are hailing him as king. They are lined up and down the streets, waving palm branches, screaming Hosanna, and chanting a quote from Psalm 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He rides into Jerusalem as Jesus Christ, superstar. That's why I love that, that, that play. Because it really describes the emotion that was involved in this event. Everybody's hailing him as a superstar, and we all know that in one end, being a superstar is really cool because everybody's attention's on you. The other end, being a superstar is really not so cool because everybody's attention is on you, right? I always tell my girls, you know, they, they, they watch the Disney Channel, and the Disney Channel's number one value is being a superstar. Do you ever remember that, that, uh, that sketch on Saturday Night Live? <laughs> yeah. Um, Everybody wants to be a superstar. But then you look at Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, now Miley Cyrus. They all end up getting caught up in what? Being a superstar. And everybody's focused on them. And every little mistake they make gets advertised in the world. This is what Jesus is experiencing here as he walks in, walks in, as he rides into Jerusalem. Everybody's focus is on him. And certainly, Jesus seems to be claiming messiahship by riding on a donkey. I mean, that's what, that's what that symbolizes. He could have walked into Jerusalem, but he rode on a donkey. If you remember King David, when he was anointed king, and he, and he made Jerusalem the capital city, which is why it's called the city of David, he took off all his clothes and danced naked through the streets as a sign of humility. But he's nothing more than his flesh and bones. He dances naked through the streets. Nothing more than a mortal man. And here Jesus is, doing the same thing. Riding on a donkey as opposed to a horse. Showing that he is humble. That he is God's. But though Jesus might be fulfilling Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9, 
He certainly has no intention of fulfilling Zechariah chapter 9, verse 10, where it says, He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. So, on the one end, they're hailing him in as king because he's fulfilling that, right? He's, he's riding it on the donkey. But what is Jesus' first stop on his tour de force in Jerusalem? The temple. And what does he do at the temple? He throws a temper tantrum and says, Get out! You have heard it said that my house shall be called the house of prayer, and you have made it into a den of thieves. And he binds cords together and whips people out, and he symbolically destroys the temple. And the people come out and say, Who gave you the authority to do this? Outrage. You're supposed to come in and attack Rome, not us. Who gave you the authority to do this? Jesus says, destroy this temple in three days. And destroy this temple and in three days I will rebuild it again. Which completely goes over their head. You <laughs> rebuild this temple. It's taken years and years to build this temple. You're going to rebuild it in three days? Of course, Jesus was saying, you're missing the point altogether, right? The temple is God's house. You've turned it into a den of thieves. This temple can be utterly destroyed. But destroy this temple. And in three days, I will rebuild it. In three days, I will rise again. So it, it's kind of fitting that we start with Palm Sunday to mark Holy Week. But in another sense, it is ironic that we celebrate Jesus is riding on a donkey for we know that four days from now, we will be remembering Jesus' last supper, his betrayal, and his arrest. Five days from now, we will be mourning his death through capital punishment on the cross. How quickly the people change. It's a tough crowd. How quickly they change. One moment hailing Jesus as king, the next moment shouting, crucify him. But it's easy for us to look at that crowd and say, oh, come on, didn't they know it? Didn't they get all that symbolism? Didn't they understand Jesus' point and purpose? But are we any different? Are we any different than that crowd? Will we stand with Jesus as he's being arrested? Will we drag our crosses with him to Golgotha? Will we follow him unto the bitter end? Christ is not calling us to hail him as king of Judea. Jesus wasn't <coughs> entering into Jerusalem as the king that was going to overthrow Rome. Jesus was entering into Jerusalem representing God's presence with all of God's people, starting with God's house and working down. God wasn't purging people of Rome or of worldly things. God was purging them of the battle within them, reminding them who they were, whose they were, and what purpose they were to serve. Why would God come and destroy Rome and let Rome get kicked out of uh, Israel when his own people weren't doing the very things that they were supposed to be doing, like taking care of the poor, feeding the hungry, healing the sick, seeing each other as all being God's children equally. These are the things that Jesus came into the city for. Christ was not calling us and is not calling us to hail him king of Judea. Christ is not asking us to lay our palms down at his feet. Rather, Christ is calling us to hail him as king of our hearts. Christ is asking us to lay our hearts before him. Jesus is asking us to be Christ for our community. 
to let him live in and through us. Notice the scripture says, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is she who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are we who come in the name of the Lord. This could have been fulfilled by anybody who was willing to come in the name of the Lord, to live as the Lord would want us to live. Being Christ in our community is not easy, nor is it convenient, but it is who we are called to be. When we are Christ in our community, through radical hospitality, radical service, and radical acts of love, only then will we be truly shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Only then will we be truly shouting our praises for who Jesus is and what Jesus comes for. Only then will we not be shouting in vain. One day, praise him. The next day, crucify him. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called each and every one of us into your service, into humble service. You said that for each of us, if we want to be the first, we must be the last. If we want to be Lord of all, we must be servant of all. Lord, it is through servanthood where we find our true purpose, our true calling. It is through giving ourselves freely as you gave for us. It is our giving ourselves freely to others in which we truly live out the praises that we sing today. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name.